Benjamin Stockmore. And uh, he stood out because, uh, like myself, he is a military veteran. I served uh, a couple tours aboard USS Enterprise in the United States Navy. But this guy, not only is he a uh, veteran of our special forces, his father served in World War II, and his two sons in the special forces currently, and his daughter is in the military as well. And I looked at him and I said, man, next to you, man, I look like an absolute slacker, man. Come on. So <laughs> I want to just recognize them and all of our fellow veterans out there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now, uh, in May, back in 1999, a great man, a great patriot, and a great champion of liberty and justice for all people gave a speech to a meeting of the National Rifle Association. That man's name was Mr. Charlton Heston. Some of you may have heard of him. What he said that day is more true now than it was then. So I want to give us if you permit me, just a little reminder by paraphrasing his words. And I will do my best to do justice to the man, his words, and the spirit in which they were spoken. So I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, do you like having freedom of speech and of religion? Do you? Yeah! Do you enjoy Freedom from search and seizure, freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, freedom to redress grievances. If you do, if you like those liberties, then we had best make sure that they always have that internal bodyguard that is the Second Amendment. Because make no mistake, The individual right to keep and bear arms is freedom's insurance policy. Absolutely. And, and we understand that it's not a right without rational restriction. What I mean by that is only the law-abiding vast majority of people enjoy the Second Amendment. Abuse it, you lose it. That's the law. We get that. But the true beauty of the Second Amendment that our Founding Fathers crafted into our birthright is the guarantee that no government despot, no renegade faction of the armed forces, no roving gangs of criminals, no evil or crime from within or without can ever rob us of the basic liberties that define our Americanism. Absolutely not. Our Founding Fathers knew that tyranny can never rise amongst a people who are endowed with a right to keep and bear arms. And I'll tell you something else. As I look out at my fellow Americans, my fellow patriots, I'm reminded that when America stands in the path of danger, there's a certain instinct that calls her finest first. When liberty shivers in the cold shadow of true peril, it's always the patriot who first hears the call. When the smoke rises from our Concord bridges and our Pearl Harbors, it's smelled first by the farmers, the common folk, who come from their simple homes to find the fire and fight because you know that sacred stuff resides in that wooden stock and that blue steel. I see some of it out there today. God bless you. When that thing that gives the most common man the most uncommon of liberties. When ordinary hands 
can hold such an extraordinary instrument. That defines the full measure of human dignity and liberty. And those five words sound a call that some of us all, and we muster. So, when you send me to Washington, D.C. as your representative, I will execute my duties with honor, integrity, and the utmost respect for the U.S. Constitution. And when the enemies of liberty try to infringe upon our most sacred freedoms, I will stand up on the floor of the United States Congress and I will be your voice and I will let them know that we said from our cold, dead hands. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America, ladies and gentlemen.